tonight for many, many reasons. When Pastor was talking about seven years ago at that that night, it was like yesterday. I, I remember I still have the message in my computer. <laughs> remember like like yesterday. When you look back at how many churches started then that are folded up. If you think of pastors who started then, but they are not alive today. You see, pastors who started with their wives, but the wife is not there, only the pastor is there. You can only but conclude that God is good. That's why one more time I want you to give the Lord a really big hand. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. I thank you I was there seven years ago. I thank you I'm alive to see this world. So Father, I give you praise. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Pastor, congratulations. We really, really celebrate God's grace in your life. And then, um, when I call Pastor Shadi namesake, I'm sure you should understand that by now. <laughs> Thank you so very much. We love the two of you so much. I love your simplicity. Wherever there is a place to roll your sleeve and work, I mean, you will see, you will see it there. Really, there's no, no complications. Let's get the job done. That's, that's the kind of, you know, pastors that, uh, you know, attract my attention. I, I love you truly, uh, with your wife and your family. Uh, Faith Foundation. One more time, can we give the Lord a big hand for our pastor, and pastor, and Mrs. for the great job that they are doing here. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is very, very beautiful. And it shall be from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Fragrance of love. I, I, I thank God that um, you know uh, it's love that I'm asked you know to <laughs> to share because the total summary of the gospel is love. And for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. John Christie was love that propelled the father to bring uh, the son. Love is, is crucial. Love is wonderful. Fragrance of love. The text I've been given is Isaiah 54, verse 10. You know, read it, and then we get into the teaching. Isaiah 54, verse 10. For the, mount, for the mountains shall depart. And the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Amen. I like that amen, but only two people said amen. amen. I can hear about five now, but we are more than five. Amen. Those on the right are louder than those on my left. Amen. Hallelujah. Now neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, said the Lord. That had mercy on thee. What a verse of scripture. Wonderful, so powerful. Let me begin by saying that love is one of the most misunderstood, misinterpreted, and misused word that you can come across. But now everybody lay claims to love. The man who says, I love you to a woman, could be saying, You look so pretty that I can't wait to take you to bed. And there are many, many things that we are liking love to. That is far from love. You know, the phrase I love you cannot be taken very seriously until you pass it through a pressure test that provides the fragrance. And what the fragrance smells like tells you whether this is love or not. You know, some will go some distance until their personal dreams will be affected to stay in love, you know, with you. One of our very, very senior pastors, he shared the story publicly. Many years ago, when he was going to get married to, to the wife, they were in courtship. And then the wife just had some reasons to visit the doctor. Um, then they were, few, they were just they were in courtship. And then the doctor called the wife that, wow, what we found in your body, you can't have a child. And the lady came out, and as he walked out, the doctor called the young man to his office and said, are you the one to marry that lady? Very bad doctor. It's a bad business. She can't have a child for you. And so the man then called the lady who is now the wife. I said, well, you know, last time you told me that your parents said we shouldn't get married. I think you need to obey your parents. <laughs> 
Uh, you need to be a friend. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. And the lady said, I'm sure the doctor told you something. He said, no, 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 I just want you to obey. Now, but before that day, he said, I love. Now, when you're talking about love, you have to pressure test it. And see what comes out. That tells you whether or not there is love or not. Now, what is the test of true love that provides an undeniable fragrance? Our test gives us three, and I will run through them, you know, quickly. Uh, so we can pray, and if there are questions, we can have time. Um, number one is the test of kindness. Isaiah 54, verse 10, our test. The A part, for the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. The fragrance of love must present a token of kindness that is undeniable. It is the abundance of God's kindness to us that has carried us this far. But for the kindness of God, none of us will be here. I know I wouldn't be here. Oh, there are many, many times in, that, in those seven years that I've passed through, <laughs> you know, some very serious situations. That if God had not been kind to me, I wouldn't be here. There's just no way. One of the times I traveled to Nigeria, I was in Sulu around six thirty here. And our brothers came shooting sporadically. And then we just managed to escape. You don't need more than one bullet to die. But they shot so many. <laughs> but we escaped. That's why we are here. Pastor was sharing a testimony somewhere where we were together. If, if the devil had his way, he wouldn't be here. And I know you too. The kindness of God is what has brought us far. So when we talk about love, love that does not present the aroma of kindness cannot be love. The way God loves us, we can easily see his kindness embedded in the love. And that's the same way Christ wants us to love one another. Am I so sure of that? Well, John 15, 12 and 13. John 15, 12 and 13. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love and no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You cannot lay claim to love until you lay down something of that. You cannot lay claim to love until you lay down something of that. When there's somebody says, I love you, I say, what have you laid down? <laughs> well, because when Jesus said, I love you, he laid down his life. He laid down the very best. You can't give more than your life. Now, you must be willing to lay down your resources, for example. Your time, your money, your comfort, your assets. It's a pressure test of true love, born out of kindness, a fragrance of love. You know, it's um, when you see sacrifice, born out of kindness, you know this fellow is loving. And it's not because pastor is here. And I've been in the city for a while now. I've probably met him in the city. But whenever there's something going on in the city, maybe somebody is doing something or they are ready, he must be somehow at the forefront, going up and down, making the arrangement. I begin to wonder sometimes, you see, doesn't he have something else to do? But see, when you love, Kindness will move you to lay down everything. We were at the meeting together yesterday in Romania. I mean, it was one sharing the pamphlet, you know, to everyone. Today, very early, I was there. And I knew we ran the entire cycle of the event today. It's not once, it's not twice. I can't count how many times I've seen him like that. You cannot lay claims to love if your kindness does not move you to lay something down for others. Then forget about love. You are not loving. We must love one another to the point that we can, you know, make time available. I remember one of our church members once, they've invited him to school many, many times because of the daughter. The daughter is just making trouble in school. So one day, they called the, the parents again. They said, look, this time, you don't have parents. We are not going. He said, we are not going. So when the girl told me, I said, okay, you know what, how we go? You know, he just must be there for people. Don't talk about love if you can't show me that you have laid down time, resources, money, and things like that. 
I remember somebody came once who was crying because all she had left, I think it was $500 if I remember. And when she came to me, all I had left was $100. You know, so when she was going, I said, well, you know, the thing you want to do will be about $600 and it's okay. I have $100, you can, you can have it. I said, but well, that's all that I have. I said, ah. I said, yeah, yeah, but I don't need it now. Don't worry. Between now and tomorrow, when just Jesus will come and I won't need it. <laughs> and if Jesus doesn't come, then uh, something will happen. You know, what are you laying down as the fragrance of love, born of kindness? So the very first thing is kindness. God is kind to us. If we must say we love, we must be kind to others. How kind are you? You must lay down your ego to stand by the shade in an act of kindness. You know, there are people that are ashamed. Nobody wants to be by them. So the crown will stand by you in the day of glory. Only the loving will stay by you in the day of shame. The crown will stand by you in the day of glory. Only the loving will, will stay by you in the day of shame. You know, if you are from, uh, I don't know the geography too, too well again, I think uh, Elisha is still in Oshun State. Right? <laughs> now somebody from me, the day you are the best, uh, you want big award. Somebody from Bado say, oh, we are from the same place. We are not far from each other. <laughs> Everybody wants to be friends. To the world, the world. Sometimes, like I said earlier, even parents sometimes are not proud of their children when it's a day of shame. I remember a joke that uh, you know, they told us many years ago. A father went to uh, award-winning or uh, prize-giving day of the school of the, of the son. So they got there, the best in physics. They recall again, go out and collect the prize. The father will look at his son and say, hmm, those are real sons. <laughs> and then they call everybody, they didn't call the, the sons. Each time they call somebody, say, wow, they are looking for son. That's a son. <laughs> so after the variety service, they were going home, and many parents, fathers were coming with their cars to pick their children. So each time the father came to pick the child, because they had no cars, said, hmm, those are real. Fathers. <laughs> 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 Look, are we proud of one, one another in the day of glory as in the day of shame? Because the two days do not come, but love we stand, whether it's day of glory or whether it's day of shame, whether it's day of plenty or day of little. Love out of kindness is present. Love doesn't choose. Love takes all. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. But that's where there is no love. Where there is love, we roll it together. Lay down your right. It's a pressure test of true love, born of kindness. So you have a right, but you lay it down. It's a fragrance of love. In John 10, verse 18, John 10, 18 from the New Living Translation, no one can take my life from me, Jesus said. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have the authority to lay it down when I want to, and I also take it up again. For this is what my father has commanded. He has a right, but he, 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 he dropped it. He laid down his right. Dropping the right to revenge against another can be demanded by love. And only the one who yields the demand embraces love out of kindness, a fragrance of love. I, I remember a, a lady, I read it in um, a Redemption Light, you know, the, the Redeem Magazine, many, many years ago. The husband, you know, committed adultery, which is bad, don't do it. But then, reported himself to the pastor, they begged the wife. The wife said, no, 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 no. If he did it as a child of God, and God did not kill him, so when I do my own, God must not be offended with me as well. I mean, when we level up, then we can start again. <laughs> I've been holding myself, I didn't do this, he did it. You are begging me, yeah, I'm going to do my own. Then, you know, I will come and tell you also, Pastor. And then, 
I mean, they thought she was joking. She went and committed adultery. Unfortunately for her, the only one time she did, she got HIV AIDS. When I was reading this story, she was dedicating her life back to Christ in tears and sorrow. She was still positive in HIV. No, but where love, true love is, you are so kind that even though you might want to revenge, but you cannot, God love is holding you back. Born of kindness. Can I hear your amen? amen? So the very first pressure test that used out the aroma, the fragrance of love is kindness. Let me hear say kindness. kindness. Say one more time, kindness. kindness. Number two, the second pressure test on love that provides an undeniable fragrance, again we find in our test, is the test of peace. Isaiah 54 verse 10 b, if you read A and B together, for the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. The fragrance of love must present a token of peace that is undeniable. Love and peace go together. They are members of the same family. You read Galatians 5.22. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Love and peace belong to the same family. Christ, out of the abundance of his love, also left peace. See, by peace I give to you. Not as the world give it. Beloved brethren, listen to me. If you have been troubled before, you will know the value of peace. And I, I mean, I have been troubled. <laughs> I have been troubled before. And look, the things that God has given to us out of his love, we must never, never take it for granted. That you can sleep peacefully and wake up peacefully. Ah, it's enough to thank God. That we can gather here peacefully. It is enough to thank God. Because when you are troubled for a moment, you will almost see heaven, sometimes maybe hell. I mean, many years ago, when, I, when we won the green card, uh, and if you won green card, you know in Nigeria, you go and do medical, whatever, and one designated hospital. And so we went there and the man, they did the physical, you know, almost, and took the blood, and said in the afternoon, we should come back for uh, the result. So we got there, in the afternoon, I think around 3 o'clock, and then they call some names, they sit down to the left, my wife and I were by the left, when they asked me to sit down by the left, maybe I will not be left. And everybody else on the right. So somebody just, somebody just had a brainwave, I believe. He said, ah, they told me that everybody on the left are HIV positive. <laughs> and everybody on the right are the negative. So right, as soon as he said that, the devil said, oh, remember you did tooth extraction three weeks ago. And the nurse did a terrible job. He, the five fingers were everywhere in my mouth. He said, that nurse gave you HIV. And see, I've met your wife since then. That's how she got it. Now, everybody coming from left, from the doctor, they were not smiling. So you see that? <laughs> my blood pressure went like, I look at my wife, she look at me, I said, ah, oh, so this is how the whole thing will. When I got to the doctor and they put the thing on my whatever, the thing went up. The doctor said, hey, what's going on? I was coming in and we took it. The money was okay. Said, Tell me HIV. What happened to HIV? The man said, what about HIV? <laughs> so they said, people on the left. <laughs> the doctor said, come on, man. It's just for administrative convenience. But sometimes we even lose our peace for nothing. But then you can hold your peace. You go to bed. You are just, I mean, can somebody wave his hand for peace of mind and shout it loud, hallelujah. You know, that's why God wants us to follow peace with all men as a fragrance of God, fragrance of God. Hebrews 12 verse 14, Hebrews 12 verse 14, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You see, churches where there is where, where, where there are no, we don't have peace, born out of love, it leads to serious trouble for the members. I tell them in our church that my first assignment as a pastor is not to preach. My first assignment is to ensure that brethren love one another 
and we are in peace. If we love one another and we are united, there is nothing we cannot do. So I always, all the time, make sure that, you know, peace is number one agenda. When you come as a troublemaker, I will do everything to beg you. If you are not going to listen quietly, I will report you to God. And this one is he wants to let, let him just, you know, by himself or herself. Just go. If there's crisis in a family, in a church, it is dangerous. It is very, very dangerous. In fact, you know, cover is removed. Cover is removed from any any church. Where there is no peace. You look at it. You know, check it out. If you read Luke, I believe 22, uh, 30, 30, 30 and 31, I think uh, Pastor Barra was, you know, took his test at the exhortation yesterday in Dominion. Simon, Simon, the devil had to have you as, as soon as he will. But I have prayed for you that I faith fail not. Why? You know, the devil was coming at Peter. But Jesus Christ didn't rebuke the devil. He just have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Now if you go to verse 24 of Luke 22, verse 24, the Bible says there is strong strife among the disciples who will be the greatest among them. Anywhere the devil sees strife, he's going to seek permission to strike. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in many churches. Oh, one of our churches in, in Nigeria, there was a big quarrel between the pastor and the assistant. And so the church was, you know, fractured into two. Some supported the assistant pastor, some supported the pastor. Oh, it was like PDPS, they were still bad. When they will want to abuse each other, they will write it and put it in offering bag and say, Usher should pass it to the first one. But four people died in good succession. The fourth person that died was struck dead in front of the church in the one of children's teacher. They came for a rehearsal or something. Also the school teacher. It was then they realized what had happened. Please, in your home, in your church, run away from this unity. Don't let it ever happen. I met a couple. They, they waited to have their only child for years, maybe about nine years. And they had the child, it's grown up to about six, six years as of that time. And so the man came from work and the wife was cooking in the kitchen. So the man went to the kitchen and took two pieces of meat. I was eating. And the woman can joke a lot. He said, ah, you're taking your ration of meat over. <laughs> you are not allowing the food to be done. You're taking two pieces of meat already. But she took the dog far. She ditched the food and did not put meat. And that can be a serious matter for an African man. Especially this is, if it's from, uh, where pastor is from. <laughs> <laughs> so the man was angry and splashed the food on the wife. And they began to, that was a part. Let's, let's joke like joke. And then that night they didn't pray together. In fact, the man went to the study. The lady was in the master. In the middle of the night, their only son Junior began to convulse. Mm -hmm. And you would think that the wife would now go to the husband and say, ah, let's pray. She, she was managing it. By the time she would go and knock the door of the study, where the husband was, the boy had died. See, the moment you allow this unity, you just License the enemy to go in and wreck. We will take the mercy of God. That's why whenever I find myself, I do my best. If I need to beg the person, whatever I need to do, because peace is needed for growth. Peace is needed for growth. To follow peace is to forego the wrong of yesterday to be able to receive the blessing of today. And later on today, I, I had an opportunity to minister somewhere. And I was telling them about a sister. In 2003, I was a area pastor in Puerto she, she came to me, or rather the resident pastor brought her, and said, oh, this sister, she's 32 years old. You know, nobody, no man had come to say, will you marry me? Uh, pastor, please help me pray for her. I said, oh, that's wonderful. And as I was about to pray, I, was, I started the prayer. I heard the Lord very clearly. That she should go and forgive her father. So I told her. Oh, she said, I don't have a father. So your father died? She said, No, I don't have a father. When we were very young, my father abandoned my mother, abandoned all of us. Only my mother raised all of us. I was only three years old. Now he's trying to make up. I don't have a father. I didn't have time to tell him the whole story in the morning. 
So she said, well, I didn't know this story. This must be the Holy Spirit now telling you what to do. Say, Pastor, if that did, I don't have a father. She left the office. She stopped coming to church. I left in 04 for the US with my family. We relocated. In 2010, seven years after, I was back in Poraco to minister at the King's Palace in Poraco. Of course, he had changed church, and so I finished ministry, and protocol, they were leading me to pastor's office, and the lady was running after me, waving at me, oh, I, I recognize her. So when I got upstairs, I asked pastor that, that lady greeting me, is she married now? The pastor said, no, 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 we are praying for her two months ago, and the Holy Spirit said, you should go and forgive the father. And she said, a pastor told her the same seven years ago, I said, I did, the whole thing. And in 2013, 10 years after, I, was, I went for the Congress in December. And I was on the protocol, protocol I, that I, that's, that's where I saw. I saw her coming. This time, it took like a second top room for me to recognize her. She's grown very late. But then I looked again. Of course, you know, I remember her. So I called her by name. I said, ah, what happened? Oh, he said she just came from either India or somewhere in Asia because she had kidney or liver problem. And uh, I said, okay, what about your father? Oh, he said, my father passed. So I said, did you make, make up with him? He said, no. I said, Pastor, I need your help. I said, what this time? He said, when they were checking the kidney of the liver, they found some growth that they be cancerous. And they said, I should go to the U.S. to check it out. Can you help me to come to the U.S.? Then I called one of them. Very well to do, lady. So I called one of the nurses in the church. They made the arrangements. And then she got, the day she arrived here, I've never seen where they stamped somebody for seven days, Pastor. And just seven days. She could not even see the doctor before she had to go back. Because the moment you don't give peace a chance, especially when the Lord is speaking to you, and you say no, you are looking for trouble. Some years ago, I was asked to come and pray for a lady that had cancer, an African-American lady. It was even on the phone. They gave me the phone. As we were about to pray for her, you know, the Holy Spirit said, oh, she should call the siblings and the mother. They are the family feud. So I told her, I said, oh, Pastor, how do you know that? I said, well, the Holy Spirit said so. I said, that's so true. It was a Tuesday. I remember because I came from that place to church for Bible study. Day. So on Wednesday, she called the family re reunion and they resolved the issue. On Thursday, she went to the hospital and there was no simple cancer there. Now, it wasn't the prayer of any pastor. It wasn't nobody lay hands on her. It was just because the root cause of the matter was taken. So I'm begging you, let, let the pressure test of love find peace in you. You'll be so surprised how blessings of God will then begin to flow. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? So to follow peace with all men is to forego the wrong of yesterday to be healed of today's disease. Follow peace with all men is to forgive who God has forgiven. You know, church has become, sometimes you just wonder. Even some, so, some of the things we do, people in the world will not even do it sometimes. So, when I was, this same time when I was an area pastor, it was testimony night on a Sunday. And one lady raised up her hand. One of the best testimonies I've had in the church. But the church made a light of it. The lady raised her hand and said, I have a testimony that I used to be a notorious prostitute, she said. Some of my prostitution is <laughs> like that of Rahab. It was bad. But I joined this church one year ago. I gave my life to Christ. I'm celebrating 12 months of no prostitution. Oh, you would think everybody would jump up in church and clap. So, who? You know, like, okay. Now, that would, have been, that would have been bad enough. But after that, whenever this lady is talking to any man, the wife of that man is, is calling, say, he's calling after service, he's calling the husband, let's go, let's go. If the husband is not paying attention, the wife will go there and drag the husband. Before long, the lady realized that her testimony is the reason people are treating her like that. Why would you forgive who God has forgiven? How perfect are you before God? Even if, if God were to mark iniquity, who? Peace is born out of the fragrance of love. And no one loses any battle when you follow peace with all men. No one. Remember the, the two women in 1 Kings 3, 23 to 25, you know the story? I mean, they are, they are both allies, they slept, and then, 
know, one overlaid his, 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 her own son and the son died, and then exchanged the son. You know the story in the days of Solomon. And then Solomon, when they were arguing, Solomon said, okay, okay, no problem. We will divide the son that is dead into two. We will divide the one alive into two. The owner of the child said, no, 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 no. For the sake of peace, let her have, you know. When the child grows up, we'll know the mother. Ah, Solomon said, here is the mother. Why? Because she will rather pursue peace. Brethren, don't tell me you love me when all the time you are with me, there is trouble. <laughs> what kind of love is that? I, mean, I can't have peace with you around me. And then you say you love me. No, you have to redefine love. When you are around me and you love me, you want me to be at peace. Isn't that the way it should be? But any time you are with me, it's trouble. So I love this church. Okay? But what are you time to come is when there is trouble? The fragrance of love, Almighty God is telling us, is covenant of peace. Covenant of peace. I need to close now. Number three, the pressure test of love that provides undeniable fragrance. I love that one. It's the test of mercy. Isaiah 54, verse 10. Our text. And I'll read it I'll completely now, the A, B, and C of it. For the mountains shall depart. And the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. For the first one, kindness. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Number two. Amen. Number three. You know, say the Lord that have mercy on thee. Amen. The fragrance of love must present a token of mercy. That's all right. You cannot love and not be merciful. The love of God. Is born of his mercies. He's a merciful God. See, the thief on the cross enjoyed the mercy of God out of the fragrance of his love. He had one minute or less to go to hell. He made the right confession. And Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Merciful God. The mercy of God is phenomenal. Hear me on this one. The mercy of God can be selective sometimes. That's why Romans chapter 9, verse 16 in particular, of Reform 15, says, Say unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have had mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have had compassion. None of him that will it, none of him that run it, so God has shared mercy. Mercy can so ignore in one the error that destroyed another. It's a fragrance of love. I mean, you know Elisha very, very well. Elisha was a no nonsense prophet. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 7, 1 and 2, 2 Kings 7, 1 and 2, there was an officer of the king there, you remember, you know, where Elisha prophesied that by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance at the gate of Samaria. The man said, even if God were to open the window of heaven, shall this thing be, what did Elisha say? Elisha said, you will see it, you will not eat that one. Hey, no nonsense prophet. In fact, in 2 Kings chapter 2, the last two verses there, the Bible says, for the two children were making jest of him. Oh, bald headed man, bald headed man. From nowhere he caught them, and two sheep here came and devoured these children. But if you get to 2 Kings chapter 4, from 15 to 17, you find the story of the Shunammite woman. This woman, Elisha, asked Gehazi, What should we do to this woman? Gehazi said, I figure out she's buried home, she doesn't have a child. Ah, woman, come here. By this time next year, you are going to have a son. The woman said something that you must never say to any pastor. Say, man of God, don't lie. He called, she called Elisha a liar. For me, that was more offensive than what the children, he was more headed now, I mean, what's the problem? I mean, man of God, they are more headed, I mean, what's the problem? They are saying the truth. That man was just asking the question, even if God were to open the window of heaven, shall this thing be? He got judged. But this woman said, man of God, stop lying. Elisha pretended not to have heard. And the Bible says, <laughs> according to the word of Elisha, the woman came back to testify. May the Lord show you mercy. May the Lord be merciful unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. See, mercy can make 
make a hero out of an error. <laughs> it's a fragrance of love. You know, I used to be, you know, HR manager, I used to work for a company called Stumpy. And one of my very, you know, young engineers that I mentored, was instrumental to his hire and all that. I love him so much, a very good Christian. He committed an error, I think, his team, I think they dropped the one of the, the tool in the hole or something like that. Some of those errors you must not do in other you know, in other services. So they assembled the committee to you know attend to the issue. And then they wrote their report that they all must be fired. So they uh, I was privy to the report. So I told him very in bad report. In fact, I should have signed with the committee, but it was close to me, so I I couldn't sign. Anyway. Now the day that to give the Past the whatever, you know, write the letter to fire them. Another operations manager was transferred from another country to take over from the one that was there before. So when that one read the report, so ah, this boy committed the same error I committed when I was a young engineer. So you go and call it, go and call it. So, you know, this error you committed was the same error I committed when I was a young engineer. I will forgive you and your team. But you know what? I'm transferred out of Nigeria on cross posting so that they will not be remembering you with this thing that you have. Now, out of the error, everybody by the way wanted to be transferred out of Nigeria. <laughs> now, because of his error that should have led to his termination, that error led to his promotion. Amen. Now if you want to clap, go ahead and give the Lord a good hand. I pray one more time. May the Almighty God show you mercy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Mercy can create a mess for one to create a room for another. You know, we are interviewing to hire some years ago. The best candidate, I don't know what happened to her. I think she stopped by somewhere and ate uh, Padenian with uh, vegetables. So she got to the interview, she didn't realize that the, the green vegetable was everywhere around this <laughs> And there was one French guy on the panel. So we asked the first question, it was so simple, so she smiled. And the green thing was everywhere. <laughs> so we managed to ask one more question and then we asked her to go. So the French guy said, no, no, we can't hire this one. You know, because if she represents us in the company, or in, you know, in Shell or you know, Chevron or whatever, and she would embarrass us. But she was the best. Now the second person who had no chance now was hired instead of her. See, God made somebody to go and eat vegetable that disqualified her. To create a way for someone. The mercy of God will make a way for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So let me close. The fragrance of love out of the pressure test of love. Like I said to you, if somebody says I love you, make sure you put it, put it through the funnel of this test. The first one is that you must pass the test of kindness. Don't tell me you love me when I cannot see your kindness towards me. What kind of love is, love is that? The test of peace. How can you say you love me when I'm troubled each time you are with me? You must pass the test of peace. And the test of mercy. You cannot claim to love me when you judge me each time I run into error. And you have no space for mercy in your heart towards me. The fragrance of love must be evident in kindness, peace, and mercy. That we show one to another, just as God has demonstrated to us. You cannot lay claim to love until you lay something of value. Whatever you lay down for love, always multiply back in multiple forms. Even though mercy can be selective, but mercy obeys the law of others. Matthew 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If you cannot show mercy, don't expect mercy. That the Jew told us one story some years ago. With that, I will, I will close. Now there's one woman in a parable. There's one woman whose son was very, very rich, a very, very powerful man of God. So the boy made it to heaven, but the mother, but the mother ended up in hell. So the boy went to God and said, Lord, look at my mother there in hell. Please, is there something we can do? God said, there is nothing you can do. Your mother, uh. They said, Lord, please, let's try something. Okay. God said, all right. Tell your mother to expect a rope. We're going to throw a rope into her. When she sees the rope, 
He should hold it gently. She was not shake it rigorously. And then we pull her from hell to heaven. So the boy said, Mama, have you heard? Mama said, Yes. So the rope came. And then the other people around her started trying to join her and join her. She just threw them away. You see, your son's rock. You remember they said, She should not shake it. God said, I told you. <laughs> The wickedness that took her to hell is the same wickedness that followed her here that can't go up. Now, the moral of that parable is that you must not expect mercy when you cannot show mercy. The fragrance of God is demonstrated in kindness, in the peace that we give to us, and the mercy that we show others. Let us rise. He loves you. I cannot say why He loves me I cannot say why On Calvary Tree He suffered for me He loves me I cannot say why Go ahead and say thank you for your love Thank you, thank you for your love Thank you, thank you, thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. I appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, thank you for your love. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now, this final prayer, pray very well before I will round up. I want you to pray and say, Lord Jesus, teach me to love as you love. Teach me to love as you love. Go ahead and pray. Teach me to love. Teach me to love. Teach me to love as you love. Teach me, Lord. Teach me to love as you love. Teach me, Lord, to love. Teach me, teach me to love as you love. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I bless your holy name. I thank you so very much for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the Fem Foundation Parish of RCCD. We thank you for these seven years. Please, Lord, be glorified in the name of Jesus. I pronounce your blessing once again upon this church. That the next seven years will be a thousand times greater than the past seven years. In the name of Jesus. I join my faith with your faith. Concerning all your desires, may your desires be granted by far more than your expectations. The Lord will exceed your expectations. In the name of Jesus, where you need only one miracle, God will give you seven. In the name of Jesus, He will make a way for you. In the name of Jesus, you will be a new beginning. The beginning of progress. The new beginning of advancement. In the mighty name of Jesus. The multitude will come from everywhere. From the south they will come. From the north they will come. From the east they will come. From the west they will come. In the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, in this house, there will only be celebration of life. In the name of Jesus. No one will die, whether young or old. In the name of Jesus. We establish the covenant of life in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. From glory to glory, from victory to victory, from joy to joy, your joy will last forever. In the name of Jesus. Father, teach us to love. Teach us to love. Teach us to love. Teach us to love like you love. In the name of Jesus. If there be anyone struggling here to love, from now on make it easy for them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus mighty name, we pray. Go ahead and give the Lord a big hand of praise.